Hello everybody, this is Reza Dorani. Welcome to another video in the Approval Cookbook series. In this video, we're going to focus on the Approval Reminder pattern and we're going to leverage Microsoft Lists. We will utilize the template associated with Microsoft Lists, which is the Travel Request Template, and we will add an Approval Scenario with reminders around it. So let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. We will begin with accessing the Microsoft Lists app. Now Microsoft Lists is still rolling out to all the tenants. I want to create a list, so I'm going to click on New List. And right here, I'm going to pick from one of the existing templates. In this scenario, we're going to pick the Travel Request Template. It's going to show you what the template looks like. So I'm just going to say, use this template, call it Travel Requests, and I am going to save this to My Lists. When you save it to My Lists, it will be stored in your OneDrive. You can also go ahead and store it in any of your SharePoint sites, team sites or communication sites. In my case, I'm going to keep it in my OneDrive and I'm going to click on create. So this will go ahead and create a Microsoft list based on the template that I selected, which was travel requests. Now, if I go and click new, as you can see, it has gone ahead and added all the columns associated with this template and all the list formatting is also available right here. Now I want to put an approval process whenever a user makes a new travel request. So how do I get started with this? Now first thing as part of this template, there's a column called approved, which is of type yes, no. So I'm just going to modify this column. I'm going to edit this column. I'm going to change this to a choice column and uh, I'm going to replace approved with approval status. And the moment the user submits, I want the status to be first new. Then once the approval process begins, I want it to be pending. If it is approved, then approved, else rejected. So all I'm doing right now is just changing the column uh, type to choice and adding a few options out here. And I'm gonna make the default selection as new. And I'm gonna click save. The moment a new request comes in, the status would be new and the information would be stored in my travel request lists. Within the context of Microsoft Lists itself, you have the option right here which says Automate. So I can go to Power Automate and select Create a Flow. Now this will list out all the templates that are available for you to utilize so you don't have to start from scratch. In this case, because I want to create an approval process, I already see a template that's available which says Start Approval when a new item is added. So I will go ahead and select this template. Remember, templates enable reusability. Right here, I have my template and these are the specific connections that are required. I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue. And what this will do is this will go out and create my flow based on the template. And in this scenario, if you notice the trigger, it says SharePoint. The reason is because Microsoft lists are nothing but the backend is SharePoint. It's just a repackaged version of SharePoint lists with list formatting, column formatting, and some additional attributes to it. So in this case, the trigger is when a new item is created where directly in my OneDrive. So you see it's pointing to my OneDrive site and the list is the travel request list that I just created. Then it will go ahead and start the approval process. I need to define who my approvers are. Then after that, there is a condition that they have provided. I can expand the condition. So they are checking the response of the approval. If it's approved, then it sends a approved notification. Otherwise, it sends a rejected notification email. On the other side, if for some reason when the start and approval action has any issue, so maybe I'm assigning it to a user and it doesn't get assigned for some reason, as you can see, if there is an error, it goes ahead and then grabs my user profile and sends me an email that the approval action failed. So this basically is just error handling that's happening on this side of the branch. Now, this is a template, so I can go ahead and modify it, customize it based on my needs. And the best part is I don't have to start from scratch. The template has already pre-created a lot of the actions for me in my flow. So let's go ahead and start customizing this. Now, first thing is I want to define my approvers dynamically. Now, in the previous video, I already showed you how you can do that. In, in that case, we created the approvers dynamically based on a category that the user selected based on metadata, basically. In this scenario, I'm going to show something different. My approval users are going to come from a security group that is in Azure Active Directory. Now, how do I get to Azure AD? If I go to portal.azure.com and if I go to Azure Active Directory and select groups, I have a group that I have created, which is called Travel Request Approvers. And as part of this group, 
I have a couple of members that I have defined, James and Sarah. So James and Sarah are the members of this security group. And what I would like to do, I would like to assign the approval task of any travel request that comes in to these users. So how do we access the members of this group dynamically? So back in my flow, I will go ahead and initialize a variable. I'm going to call this var approvers. And this is going to be of type string. I'm going to rename this action to approvers. Then I will go ahead and create another variable. So I'm initializing another variable. This one is going to be called var approvers array. This will be of type array and I'm going to rename this to provers array. The next step is I want to read the members of the Azure AD group. So the way I'm going to do that is this. I'm going to add an action and search for Azure AD. So right here is the Azure AD connector. Now as part of this connector, there is an action called get group members. Now once you select this, it will ask you for the ID of the group. Now if I head back to Azure AD and if I go to the properties associated with my group, one of the properties is called object ID. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the object ID, go back to my flow and just paste it right here. So this will go ahead and get me all the group members from my list. The next step is I'm going to go ahead and add another action. And this time I'm going to use the select action. The reason I'm using select right here is because I want to select specific properties that this action outputs. The get group members will give me a lot of details around the group members. However, I'm just interested in the email of the group members. So the way I can get that information is by executing a select action. So for the from property, I'm going to go to dynamic content and from the get group members action, I'm going to pick group members. And for the map property, I will go ahead and first switch this to text mode, select this and then under dynamic content, I'm going to search for the email of the group members, which is right here, group members email. So this will go ahead and grab all the email addresses associated with the group members. So now this will return me an array. I have created two variables, one which is a variable of type string, the other one which is an array. So the next step is I'm going to go ahead and set a variable and I will set the approvers string variable. And right here, I'm going to use an expression the expression is called join. We'll head over to dynamic content, pick the output of the select action, which is going to be the array of the email IDs that I need. So I will go ahead and join these with a semicolon because I want the email addresses semicolon separated when I'm assigning the approval task. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So I have my list of approvers and a string variable. At the same time, I'm going to also go ahead and set another variable. This one is my array and I will need this later on. There is a reason for it for now. I'm just going to go ahead and whatever response I get from the select action, the output of the select action, which is also an array, I'm just going to store it in my array variable for now. So all I've done right now is I've gone ahead and grabbed the group members. I have their email addresses semicolon separated in a variable called var approvers. And I also have their email IDs in an array type variable called var approvers. The next thing is the start and approval action right here that you see as part of this template goes ahead and starts my approval process. Now, now in this scenario, I want to show you how we can not only perform an approval action, but at the same time also send reminders to our approvers that they have an approval task pending. Now, if I go to add an action and if I go to approvals, if you remember, we covered this in the first lesson of our approval cookbook series. Start and wait for an approval basically starts the approval and waits for the approval. So the flow just stops until the approval decision is taken. Create an approval basically creates the approval, but the flow does not wait. The flow moves ahead until I actually execute wait for an approval action. Now, as part of this template that I created, it utilizes the start and wait for an approval action. Now, I don't want to use that. I'm going to go ahead and first create an approval. So I'm creating this. I'm using the create an approval action. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and pick approve, reject, first to response. So the first approver to respond to this approval task, their decision will be considered as the final outcome of this approval task. I need to go ahead and fill out the other properties. So I already have them right here. So I'm just going to copy paste it right here. So I have my title. I have my details right here. I have my item link right here and I have my item link description. So literally all I've done is literally copied and pasted this. So I'm going to delete 
this approval action that I have right here because I don't want that. Now it goes ahead and creates an approval for me. The assign to is basically who I want to assign this approval task to. I will go ahead right here and switch this to advanced mode and pick my variable which is my string variable of approvers which has the email IDs of my approvers semicolon separated dynamically getting it from an Azure AD security group. What I would like to do is while the approval is waiting I would also like to go ahead and start sending reminder emails based on specific conditions that I define for my approvers. So how do we do that? Now the first thing is right here, if you notice because I deleted that task, uh, this branch now is just executing on success. So I, I'm gonna just go ahead and delete all these actions right here in this branch since I don't need them. So I have deleted all the actions after the create and approval action. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new step. And right here, I'm gonna execute the wait for an approval action. I just created the approval. Now I need to wait for the approval. The ID of the approval will be the dynamic property that I will get from the create and approval actions, approval ID, and let's select it right here. While the approval is waiting, I wanna go ahead and send reminders to my approvers if they have not responded within a period of time. So how do I design that pattern in my flow approvals? For that, I'm gonna go ahead right here above the approval action I'm going to add something known as a parallel branch. Now parallel branch in flow basically creates an additional branch that can execute in parallel with the other branch. And I can create many more parallel branches right here. Right here as part of the parallel branch action right here, I'm going to go ahead and create something known as do until. It's a control action which is called do until. So I'm going to pick the do until action right here. When the approval is created, we are waiting for the approvers to respond and until and unless the approvers respond to the approval, I want to send reminder emails to my approvers, maybe daily, maybe every three days, maybe based on a due date, whatever your use cases. Now, in order for me to do that, first thing is I need a variable. So I'm going to go ahead and add an action. Once again, initialize a variable type Boolean and by default, I want to set the value of this variable to false. So the way I'm going to set it to false, remember this is of type Boolean, so don't go ahead and type false directly right here. Go to expression and enter false. There's a difference between false as text and false as an expression, which truly is the Boolean value. Once the approval is created, next step is I'm waiting for the approval action to complete. Once the approval action completes, I will go ahead and set that variable to true because that will inform me in the flow that the approval action has completed. So I'm going to pick my where approval complete, which is of type Boolean. Once again, the value right here, I'm going to set it as an expression, set it to true, hit OK. Now, once this process completes, I will go ahead and right here, I will add a condition. And my condition is the outcome of the approval. So I'm going to search for the outcome of the approval. And if the outcome of the approval is equal to approve, I would like to go ahead and use the update item action in SharePoint. Right here, I'm gonna pick my SharePoint site. Now please note, this will list out all the SharePoint sites that you're frequently using. Because I created this Microsoft list in my OneDrive, if you look at the URL of my Microsoft list in this scenario, which is my travel request list, right here on the top, I actually have the entire URL to my Site. So I'm just going to copy this URL, head back to my flow, go to enter custom value and plug it in right here. And once you do that, if it connects to it successfully, which it should, it should list out all the lists in my OneDrive. I'm going to go ahead and pick travel request, which is my list. And now it is asking me for the ID of the item. The trigger action itself will have the ID. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick the ID and any mandatory fields that you have as part of the process would have to be refilled. So title is one of the mandatory fields. So I'm just gonna set it back to its original value. And the main thing that I would like to change here in this scenario is the approval status, which is right here. I'm gonna change this to approved. I'm gonna copy this action and reuse it right here. Now, if I open this condition, this is the rejected case. So I'm gonna change my status to reject. Now on the left hand side of my branch, once the approval action completes, it, the flow will move ahead and this variable will be set to true. That means this variable will be true only when the approvers have taken their decision. In my scenario, the task is create an approval first to respond. That means the moment the first approver responds, 
the approval process completes. So now if I head to the do until action, this basically is a loop that will keep running until a specific condition is met. So what's going to be my condition here? I'm going to go ahead and pick my variable, which is where approval complete, which is my Boolean variable. And I will check to see if this value is equal to true. Now I have noticed that there's a little bug right here that it doesn't uh, allow me to pick my dynamic content or enter an expression here for some reason in the do until branch. So you can still get around it. Just go to edit in advanced mode. And this basically pastes the expression in here. And right here, I'm going to replace this with true. So I've basically gone ahead and set the expression to say, does this variable value equal to true? And I'm going to go back into basic mode and notice it actually puts that expression syntax in here. So for some reason, there's a little bug out here. When you're working with the do until branch, do note that uh, this loop also has certain limitations. So it can run 60 times and it has a timeout of PT1H as you can see right here. So you need to be aware that you need to change certain actions right here. So it says that this loop is going to run 60 times. You can change these limits based on your requirements. Also note that the do until loop times out after one hour right here because that's the default timeout that's defined. Flows can run up to 30 days. So I'm replacing this with PT720H means run it for 720 hours, which is approximately 30 days. So I'm just changing my limits right here. So make sure you check the do until flow limits. I will put a link in the description of the video around the limits as well around actions. It's very important to be aware of that. Now what I can do right here is I can go ahead and introduce something known as a delay action and I can delay this to let's say one day. So what this will do is once the flow comes to this part, it will stop at least on the right hand side of the branch. It will pause until one day. And once the delay ends, what I can do is I can go ahead and add a condition first. And in that condition, I can go ahead and check the output of that Boolean variable. So if this is equal to false, that means the approvers have still not taken their decision. I would like to go ahead and notify my approvers that there, there is an action that is still pending that they need to take a decision on. Go ahead and send an email. I'm going to use the send an email action right here. Now in the to branch, I will go ahead and pick my variable approvers, which is my string variable. And right, right here, I can put in the subject, which I can say something on the lines of approval reminder for travel request. And this is the title of my request. So there's an approval reminder right here. I can also go ahead and define my entire email body right here. Now the key to note here is I also want to provide a link so that they can directly go and take the approval decision. One of the dynamic properties from the create and approval action is something known as a respond link. You see respond link right here. So I'm going to pick this, but before I pick this, I want to go ahead and actually add a link. So I'm going to go ahead and use the code view and right here, I'm going to add an anchor tag. href is equal to, so this is this basic HTML. The URL to my anchor tag is going to be the respond link and the title, I'm going to close the anchor tag. And the text that should show up for that link in my case would be the title that the user put in when they made the request. So that's how I'm defining a link right here in my email body and you will see this in action. So I'm basically sending a reminder notification to my approvers on a daily basis in this case. Why on a daily basis? Because I'm delaying this by one day and if they have not responded to the approval task, this will send a reminder email. Now let's assume your scenario is such that you have a particular due date that you're defining for your approvers. Maybe once the task is created only after seven days, I want to go ahead and start sending them notification emails. As part of the approval action, there is a property called request date. It's a dynamic content property, which basically tells you when this approval was requested to your approvers. You can actually use that date and check to see if it is X number of days from today. So let's say if they haven't responded for seven days, now I'm going to start sending my approval notifications. You can do things like that by writing expressions right here. So you can get as creative as you want, but the pattern right here of creating a parallel branch and the do until action is, is all what you need. And then you can just define your expressions right here based on your use case. Now in my case, because I'm demoing this, I won't wait a day. So I'm going to actually change this to 20 seconds. Okay, so I'm just going to wait 20 seconds and I'm going to start nagging my approvals. Of course, not a real world use case here. Make sure you at least have this to a day. 
this basically completes my flow. I'm going to call, I'm going to rename this flow to travel requests approval. Let's hit save. Also, one additional thing that I missed in my flow is when the item gets uh, created, I want to also go ahead and update the status of my approval. So I'm going to go ahead and update the item. I'm going to change the approval status right here to pending. I'm going to go ahead and save my flow. And now I will go ahead and create a travel request item. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new request. I'm just going to fill out some basic details. I'm going to click on save. And the moment I do this, information has gone into the travel request list. And now I'm going to be waiting for the flow to run. Okay, so here's my flow that has started and my flow is currently running. First thing my flow did was I updated the status to pending. The next step is I grabbed all my approvers and dynamically set those approvers in the variable right here. As you can see, my string variable has those two members of my Azure AD security group that I'm going to be using in my create and approval process. Also, when I created the parallel branch, observe two things that are happening right here. One on the left hand side of the branch, the wait for an approval action has executed. Second on the right hand side, the do until loop is also running. Now let's go back to the Microsoft list. Another thing is what, going back to my approval status column. I'm going to go to formatting for this column and uh, just add a little bit of uh, formatting right here. So I'm just going to choose certain colors Let's save. So I at least see the status and action. So right here, when I created my item, here's the item and currently the status is pending. That's because my approval process is currently running. Now let's log in with another user. Okay. Now I'm logged in as one of the approvers, which is James. And as you can see, James has received the approval task and it is asking James for the approval decision. Now, I'm going to wait for a few seconds because if you remember, I have a do until branch as well that is running. That's going to keep sending me now reminders. And right here, James has the uh, decision to take for the approval. This is the email that goes out at the same time. I also have my approval reminder email now that is going on because I haven't taken the approval decision. And this is that link that I created, which is basically deep linking directly to that approval action. So if I was to click this, it will directly open the approval dashboard and not just that straight away point to that item where I can go ahead and take the decision. So let's say James goes ahead and approves it, says OK and confirms. The moment the confirm button is hit, so now the reminder email should stop because the approvals have been recorded. If I head back to my Microsoft list, you will note that the status has changed to approve. If you go back to the flow in action now, notice the flow has completed. That's because once the approval action completed, the variable went to true and the do until branch stopped. I can also see how many times the branch ran. It ran four times. So basically I got those notification emails every time. Now logging back in as one of those approvers, if they go back and they again click on that same approval task link, you will note that flow is smart enough to know that the approval decision has already been taken. So it says that the approval is no longer active. Even if I go to the original item, notice how the adaptive card has already completed because it says the request is complete. So also logging in as the other approval, which is Sarah. Notice Sarah has the original email that comes out and it says the decision has been taken because my approval action was first to respond. The first person has already responded. Sarah also gets all those reminder emails because even Sarah was a part of the approval process until the decision was not taken. And if Sarah clicks on that same approval link it will deep link directly into the approval dashboard and it will also let Sarah know that the approval task is no longer active because a decision has been taken. Now this was actually relatively simple purely because the approval type associated with my approval action was first to respond. Same thing goes for the custom responses wait for one response. The moment one person responds the approval task completes. If you want to learn more about all the different approval types once again, check out the first video in the approval series. Now, how do we go about scenarios for everyone must approve or wait for all responses? Now, these type of approvals are different because it will wait for other approvers to respond to the approval action. So let's say I pick wait for all responses. That means I will be waiting for each and every approver to respond. And in this scenario, the issue is if I run the same logic, right? And let's say the approval task goes out to James and Sarah, even though Sarah responds because the approval is not complete, but because it's still waiting on James to respond, it will keep sending the notification emails to both James and Sarah. So basically in this scenario, what I need to do is I have to check to see which approver has actually responded to my approval action. Now I'll show you how we can do that. 
So in this case, I'm picking custom responses, wait for all responses, and I'm going to pick two custom response types, which is approve and reject. Now, first things first, if you remember as part of our previous video, we covered this in the condition right here to check to see what's the final outcome. Now we have to change this to the outcome does not contain the word reject. So if it doesn't contain the word reject, that means the process has been approved. Otherwise, if it has the word reject, then in that case, the process is rejected. Now it's important to understand that all the approval task information is stored in CDS, which is the common data server. So if I head over to flow.microsoft.com again, on the left hand navigation rail, if I go to data and entities, okay, and this redirects you to Power Apps, but in reality, we are looking at the CDS database associated with the environment in which I'm creating my flow. So if I change this view to all, and if I search for approval, you will notice that there are plenty of entities or tables that are created in CDS that support the entire approval process. Now, the key here is that whenever a user takes a response based on an approval action, that response information goes into this table called approval response right here. And in this table, if I head over to data, so I'm just going to the data tab and I'm going to change my view to all fields. This will now show me all the approval information that had taken place in the system. Right, so I've got so many approvals that are taking place in the system. That's all that information is available right here. And the key thing is once an approver takes a response, an entry is made in this list. If that entry is not in this list related to the approval action, that means the approver has not responded. And how do I search to see if the user has made a response right here? One of the columns is called approval ID index right here. And this has the ID of my approval. Now, if I head back to my flow, right, I already have the ID of my approval. It's a dynamic property that the create and approval action gives me. Now, how do I leverage this to go ahead and check to see if the approver had responded or not? This condition right here is where we are checking to see if that variable is true or false. Now I don't require this. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. First, loop through all my approvers. So I'm going to add and apply to each branch. And I need to loop through all my approvers. Where are all my approvers? All my approvers are in my array variable right here. Remember, for each loop requires an array, and that's what I'm providing it with that array variable that I had created. I told you there's a reason why I created it. This is where I'm using that variable. Once I'm running this loop, what I want to do is I want to query that CDS table. So there's an action called list records. And please note that this action is a premium action. So if you are using this concept wherein you have multiple approvers and the flow is waiting for each and every approver to respond, basically you're using the wait for all responses approval type or everyone must approve approval type. In that case, you would have to use this premium connector to truly get the reminder emails out correctly. So I'm going to use this. Flow is running under the context of the person who has built this flow. So you just need one premium license for a user account that is running this approval process. So right here, it's asking me for the environment. I will go ahead and pick the current environment, which is my environment in which I'm building this flow. And in the entity, I'm going to go ahead and search for approval responses. So I'm picking the approval responses entity. Now for the approval responses entity, I have to do a little bit more work here. In the filter query, I need to define what my query is. I have my approval ID that I need to filter on. So how do I query based on the approval ID? If I head back to CDS and if I head over to fields, remember approval ID index was that column that has the ID of the approval. It has a name associated with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this go to my flow. I'm going to paste that internal name of that column right here. And I'm going to do a little bit of an O data query here. I'm going to say if this is equal to now equal to what equal to the approval ID. Now I can directly go ahead and pick the approval ID and paste it in here, but I'm going to write an expression and that expression is going to be called to upper. So I just want to convert this to uppercase right here. So I'm going to use to upper and go back to dynamic content and pick the approval ID. I'm going to say, okay, so rather than directly assigning the approval ID, I'm converting it to uppercase. Why am I converting this to uppercase? Well, if I head back to my data and if I go to all fields, if you look at the 
approval id index column they are all in uppercase so that's the reason why i am converting it converting my case to upper so i'm using a little bit of expressions at the same time i need to also fire one more query and that is go and grab all the records associated with this approval but associated with the current user as well so i need to know if my users who are part of this approval process is there an entry made associated with this approval id and with their email address and the way i'm going to do that is once again a little bit of expression just going to go ahead and plug this in and all of these expressions right here the entire filter query i will put it in the description of this video and here what i'm doing is i'm adding an and query to this and there's another field in the approval response entity which is called owning user i'm just grabbing the internal email address and i'm checking to see if that equals to the current item what is current item it's another expression it's basically the current email address that is running in the for loop now once i do this this will tell me whether or not that specific approver has responded or not and how do i check to see if there was a response or not i can add another condition right here and once again add another expression I need to check to see what's the length of the list records action, right? How many items got returned? If there is a record that got returned, that means this particular approver has taken a response. If there is no record in the approval responses entity, that means this approver has not responded. So let's go ahead and use the length function. Let's go to dynamic content. And in this case, all I need is the list records value property. Hit OK. And I'm going to check whether this is equal to zero. So if the length is equal to zero, that means the approver has not responded. Then I will go ahead and send an email. And this time I'm going to send an email to whom? I'm going to send an email to, once again, expression item. Why expression item? Because I'm running this for loop. I want the current item in the loop, which is the email address of the approver that's running. I have that right here. I'm going to plug in my subject again. Okay, so this should send an email only when the approver has not responded. So let's go ahead and save this flow. Let's go ahead and create a second item in my travel request list. So I've created a second item. The status is new. And once the flow triggers, this status will automatically change to pending. Okay, so the status has changed to pending. My flow has triggered. Now let's play the first user persona, which is James. James receives the approval task and the reminder emails have also started coming in. Now let's say James goes ahead and takes the decision and James says, all good. We hit submit. So James has taken a decision for the approval task. Now the moment James takes the decision for the approval task, remember the approval type was wait for all responses. So it's still going to wait for the other approvers to respond. Now, first thing notice, I'm not getting any more reminder emails. The reason is because James has already taken his decision. Now let's log in with the other user persona. So here is approver two, which is Sarah. Now Sarah has not responded to her task and Sarah is receiving the reminder emails. The reason is because Sarah is still to take her decision. So Sarah can directly click on the reminder email and go ahead and take her decision. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna hit confirm. Once I do this, the process now should complete. Sarah will not receive any more reminder emails. Notice my flow has also completed. My travel request list status has changed to approve. So that's how you can check to see which approvers had not responded. So this completes the approval reminder pattern. So let's recap the entire scenario. We created a Microsoft list. We used the travel request template. We went ahead and created a column for storing the status of the approval. Then we went ahead and we dynamically fetched our approvers, created an approval process, sent reminder emails to our approvers. We saw the different approval types and how we can send those reminder emails as well. I hope you guys like this. Please comment, like, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I will see you guys in the next approval series cookbook video. Thank you so much for watching.